Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charleston, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, this is going to be a very fun episode for me because I'm going to have a lot of fun doing it. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, like the video if you haven't already. Now, as y'all know, uh, for the people that have been following this channel for the past, I don't know how long, six months, one year, whatever it is, y'all are fully aware that Kobe Bryant uh, is my favorite player. And sometimes we get questions on... On, on the channel, on Instagram, on Twitter. Hey, why don't you make, why don't you produce, why don't you guys produce more Kobe Bryant videos? And, uh, well, today it looks as if uh, you're going to get your wish. Now, as a Kobe Bryant fan, I followed his career very, very, very closely. And I witnessed his second run to those back-to-back -back NBA championships with Paul Gasol, Lamar Odom, Derek Fisher, Sasha Vujicic, all of these guys. I, I followed that run. Uh, really, really closely. And those those Laker teams, in my opinion, were a lot of fun to watch, if I'm being honest. And they had some classic, classic uh, battles against the Denver Nuggets uh, toward, you know, um, towards that that championship run uh, that, you know, that they went on. And Kobe, and when Kobe faced the, Kobe Bryant actually faced the Denver Nuggets and the Kobe Bryant and the Lakers faced the Denver Nuggets uh, for two straight years in the playoffs. And he totally demolished them. In the first year that he faced the what is it the, the the Denver Nuggets in 2008, they he Kobe basically toyed with them. If anybody saw that series, and you actually go and watch the highlights of Kobe Bryant playing that series, it was I mean he was on he Kobe was on something else, man. If you go watch the shots he was making, it was it was absurd how good this dude was playing. It, I, there's nobody I've seen play basketball since the Kobe in his prime that I could say, oh, you know what? This dude is, there's nobody. Some people say, look, there's nobody I've seen play basketball better than that dude in his prime. If I'm talking about like people I watched, I'm not talking about Jordan. I'm talking about that I've seen in this last 20 years. There's, there's been no one. Kobe was, he was on another level and he, and in that, in that series, he swept them and he averaged 33 and a half points per game, 5.3 rebounds, 6.3 assists, 1.5 steals, 1.5 blocks. He shot 50% from the field in that series and he shot 33% from the three. He made 10 threes, attempted 30 threes in that series, but no one was really focusing on three. So those were his stats. And if you actually watch those games that I said before, it was, it, it was something crazy. The following series, they played against the uh, Denver Nuggets, but this time... They faced them in the Western Conference Finals. And for those who remember, you'll remember. If you didn't see it, you got go go back on YouTube and go look up the highlights of those games because Kobe was giving them dudes fits, right? It was a great team, but he was giving them dudes problems. And what I remember during that series the most when Kobe was playing was I got to see some of the dirtiest plays I have ever seen on an NBA player against Kobe Bryant when he was facing Dante Jones. This is what I think. And finally, it seems as if Dante Jones is breaking his silence and he's finally telling us his side of the story of what happened. And I think he was recently on the Gilbert Arenas show. I believe it's called uh, Fubo Sports. Yes. And he was on there basically explaining his side of the story. So before we go too far, take a listen to Dante Jones basically explaining or giving us the background story of what happened between Kobe, him and Kobe Bryant in that 2009 series in the Western Conference Finals. Take a listen to that here. I think about Kobe in like the, the, the West Finals of 09, okay. the same, you know, the, so, the same okay. little joint. Kobe on the Western Conference Finals. We, people have made a block of like four plays to be an all-out assault on Kobe. Number one, with George, with George Carl, that's my guy, but my job, I, he had hits out on people. It was like wanted posters. Okay, you get, if I get a flagrant one, we paying it. If you don't get a flagrant one, you ain't doing your job. Like you getting cussed out for like layups. <laughs> like we were we were bruisers, so yeah, like for sure. you ain't coming in our paint. First and foremost, you come in the paint, you gotta, you gotta sit down. And they allowed it at that point in time. So like we had first round was Chris Paul. Chris Paul, me and Kenyon just jumped in, physical waiting, physical. CPA ain't talking for like two years <laughs> because it was just so physical, but that was our job. Like, we gotta, we gotta get the ball out your hands. We knew that once you you trying to jump out of 6'6 six, six and 6'9, six, put some wood on you, mm -hmm. like, we're gonna make you quit. Dirk the next round had to quit. Um, then you get the cold. And cold with everything. But as I said before, I got a lot of respect for him, so I'm coming in respectfully. He don't really care about you. So while he doesn't want to be touched, he likes to do a lot of touching. Mm -hmm. He likes to elbow you in your face. And he likes to push you to get open. And like, 
which is all part of the game. I'm not mad at, but then he complained to the refs, you can't touch him. One play, when I tripped him, I remember denying him to get the ball open. He couldn't, he, his teammate didn't give it to us. He was mad at him. So he swung it and, no, I apologize. It was, it was side out of bounds. He, I'm denying him. He elbowed me in my Adam's apple. So when that closes up on you, like you can't breathe, now I'm mad. And I'm a person that believes in get back. So he swung the ball and he tried, and the shot went up. He tried to get by me and as not being able to breathe, I was like, nah, get back here. I'm, not, I'm done with this. Like, I'm, I want that foul. They didn't call it. I was like, oh, I got away with it. Cool. He's livid, never said a word to me. That's one block. But we've been fighting for games here now, like four games prior. Now we in the Western Conference Final. Everything's on the line. You didn't elbow me in my throat. I don't know if y'all have been elbowed in your throat before, but it kind of really hurts. So I clipped him. You're right. And then we had, then I appreciate no, no, I pushed these Ubers under this. No, 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 I guarded thousands of possessions. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like that's, I only had one possession on him and, and I tripped him. Mm -hmm. He elbowed me in my throat, I had to get back. I couldn't get my hands on him. <laughs> I got it. I, I feel like I got it. If they called a foul, yeah, I did that. I did it. I did it on See, he's strong enough and to what? Do, he's strong enough to eye clip somewhere and. I just couldn't get my hands on him. Never again. I blacked out. I blacked out for a half a second. I couldn't I could get my hands on I wanted my get back. Got it back. Cool. Then there's another one. I pushed him in the back. Right? And our rule was, like, no dunks and no layups. So I thought I was doing the right thing. I swear I thought I was doing the right thing. Because my only, he, he beat me for the first kind of time, like, like where I see the back of his jersey. Mm -hmm. I got two options. Take his head off, because he can't see me. Like, when he gets in the air, I got to swipe and just take him out. Mm -hmm. Or push him before he even jumps. So you see me, I just push him and he never gets in the air and he feels like he's disrespected. But I can't give up layups because I lose money. I get fully disrespected in timeouts. Like they had me so wound up. Chauncey, uh, Kenyon, George had me so wound up and so frustrated. They were on my ass at all points in time. So they, if, he, if he'd have got a dunk, I'm getting cussed out by Big Shot. Okay, so... Here are my thoughts on what he had to say. I have never seen someone walk under jump shooters when they're coming down as much as Dante Jones did against Kobe Bryant. It is one of the most dangerous plays in all of basketball go look at dante jones and kobe bryant highlights and you will witness some of the dirtiest basketball plays it was that exact same play that zaza pachulia did to Kawhi leonard in two consecutive plays in the same game that he injured Kawhi leonard zaza pachulia did that exact same thing where he closed out on him and kept on walking under him so he would not give him any um, airspace to land. It's the exact same dirty play. It is dirty. And it was so dirty, in fact, that about four years later, when Kobe Bryant was facing against uh, facing the Atlanta Hawks, when Dante Jones was then Atlanta Hawk, they were playing in 2013, and Dante Jones injured Kobe Bryant and Kobe Bryant for the first time actually expressed how he really felt about the play. So for those of you who missed what Kobe Bryant had to say about the branded defense that Dante Jones was playing, take a listen to Kobe Bryant here after the game when he was talking about what Dante Jones did to him after he got injured. Take a listen to Kobe talk about it and listen to everything that he said. Take a listen to that. What happened on the play when you got hurt? <clears throat> well, you know, first and foremost, I think officials really need to protect shooters. And these defensive players, you can't you can contest shots, but you can't walk underneath players. That's, that's dangerous for the shooter. So the defender walked under you. Did your ankle come down on his foot? Yeah. How does this compare to other injuries you've had in the past? He Jalen rosed me. So this is all going all the way back to the 2000 finals? Yep. The Lakers official word on this is severe ankle sprain. You're out indefinitely. What does that mean to you? I don't know. So this is as bad of a sprain as you've had in 13 years? Yep. Kobe, is Friday in the realm of possibility? I wonder if he's got a pretty good pain threshold. I don't know. 
at the end of the game, did you get the shot you wanted before he ran at you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's my shot. It's a shot I'm very comfortable taking. But, you know, just can't go into any shooters, man. It's a dangerous play. I saw you talking to the officials afterwards. When you brought that point up, what did they tell you? I didn't bring that point up. I mean, I brought up the fact that, you know, um, he instructed Gary to come out there on the court. And he came out there on the court, which then takes me out of the game permanently. I can't go back in. So that was just a miscommunication. I was just having a conversation with the official about. Dante Jones got up from the flagrant of tripping you back in the... 2009 finals. Was this deliberate, do you feel like? No, I don't want to. I, don't, I, I just think, you know, players need to be made conscious of it. And I think officials need to protect shooters, period. Kobe, elaborate on that. What do you mean? But if it, I mean, you're a really good defender, too. What does it mean, protect shooters? Like, you can't, you don't want... I'm always conscious of it. When I go to contest shots, I'm always very conscious about making sure I don't walk underneath them. And, um... Uh, you know, it's just a very, very dangerous play, and especially you know, if I'm fading away. I mean, there's, there's no rhyme or reason why I should come down anywhere near somebody's foot. Is your is your plan just now treatment and see what happens Friday? Would you would you think about going home? How do you feel about what you do like tonight and tomorrow? I don't know. I can't get my mind past the fact that I got to wait a year to get revenge. So basically, four years later. You injure a guy doing the exact same thing you were doing four years prior in the Western Conference. And let me tell you, let me tell you what sticks out to me uh, the most about watching Kobe Bryant play doing those. If, if, if you guys saw Kobe, then you, you, a lot of you, a lot of what I'm about to say is going to resonate with some of you. Some of you didn't, then it, it probably won't. Um, but what really stood out to me about watching Kobe Bryant play in those series was that he never once complained publicly. Never. If you look about, if you look at the amount of whining that a lot of guys do today in NBA games, like Luca and all, they, all they do is all they do is complain. It was so bad that Ime Udoka, the head coach of the Boston Celtics, basically had to sit his team down and told them stop complaining to officials. Like enough is enough with the complaining and the whining. N at no point during that series did Kobe Bryant complain about Dante Jones publicly. He was fully aware of what was going on, and I never heard him talk about it during that series at any point. Kobe seemed to just somehow play through it. It was very strange. And as a Kobe fan, in my personal opinion, I believe Kobe Bryant's mentality um, was more impressive than his basketball game. If I had to dissect the two, I think Kobe Bryant's mental approach as an athlete to sports and life was second to, is, is up there with any motivational speaker or any other athlete that ever played any sport this guy showed a considerable amount of constraint but he also seemed kobe also seemed that he totally embraced the fact that that was an aspect of basketball that basketball had his good side and his bad side, and it was all part of the game. And in some ways, it's a metaphor about life, in some ways. Because life has its rainy days, its sunny days. You have your highs, you have your lows, you have your good moments, you have your bad moments, you have your moments of triumph, you have your moments of disappointment and tragedy. But it's all life, and you can't jump outside of it. You can't have one without the other. That's why when you see a lot of people on Instagram and every single day, it's a positive post. The sun is always shining. They always look good. It's all, those people are the biggest liars in the universe because that's not life. That is not life. And I think it was a metaphor to the way Kobe Bryant approached basketball. And I think people that follow Kobe Bryant uh, this part of this video, I think, is going to um, resonate with you guys. I think he just took the bad with the good, and he understood it. There was a part of the game. Now, back as as far as what uh, Dante Jones had to say after listening to him, um, him kind of break his silence after all of these years, I'm still calling those plays dirty basketball plays. Sorry, there's still some dirty basketball plays. There's no there. There's nowhere in basketball where it says you should push a guy when he's in the air. To stop him from getting a layup or dunk. What part of basketball? What part of defense is that? What part of defense? Is that, that is not defense. 
That is just a dirty basketball play. Walking under guys when they're going up to jump to shoot their shots and continuing to walk. That is not a contest. That is not a closeout. Usually, when guys that play clean defense, they close out and then they shade to the left. If the guy is shooting from the corner, you're going to close out to him and then close out with your hand as you're shifting towards his body. You don't close out into him, move your entire body into him while he's coming. You're going to injure the guy. That is not a basketball play. I don't understand how that is. So to me, I have to listen to all of that. I'm still not buying it. I'm sorry. Those are dirty plays. There's no two ways to slice it. There's no other way to look at it. It's like you slapping somebody and then trying to retro, retro, retroactively go back and, no, 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 it wasn't a slap. What you see is, what you didn't understand was, it was my hand touching his face. It wasn't a slap. You got to understand that he, I'm like, come on, cut it out, bro. You slapped him. And that's what exactly, those were some dirty plays. I wanted to cuss, but I'm not going to. So what I want to know from you guys, for those of you who saw Dante Jones play against Kobe Bryant in those series, after listening to him, do you some, do you change your opinion on it? Do you feel like, okay, no, no, they weren't dirk, dirk, dirty plays. They were just circumstantial plays that they were just kind of knee jerk reaction plays to what was happening in real time. And he just reacted that way. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. And we'll definitely catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.